Uh, I guess related to companies hiring. So you guys know Mischief, right? It's this like company that does these crazy stunts. They're on, I think, stunt number 70. And I th- their latest stunt I thought was really interesting and relates to this idea of just like creative hiring. So if you scroll down. To, 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 tell me about what Mischief is. I don't entirely get it. Because they raise funding, but when you explain what they are, I'm like, who, what grown adult would trust Dude, this it's, child it's with money? <laughs> it's like South Park or Saturday Night Live. It's a weekly show. It's like a weekly sketch, uh, but it's just done through code. They make a website instead of like a video making a joke. They make a website that's a joke. Yeah. But is it exactly? M- does it make money? I think it does. I don't know how much they've made. They've raised three and a half million dollars. So I don't know, like you're saying, I don't know who those investors are, what they're looking from Mischief, but just to give like two examples. So one of them recently was, I think it's like called Tuntine. I don't know why it's called that, but basically it's called the game of death online, which you sign up, you get an account and you pay $10 to join the game. And all you have to do is log in daily to stay alive. And the last person who stays alive, gets all of the money. So it's just kind of like these silly, quirky games. But the last one they did was, they also do like commentary through their game. So it was a commentary on, uh, in this case, the MSAT. So they got people to pay $50 to take the MSAT. And the highest score won, it's basically like a, a their version of the SATs. Um, and the person who got the highest score won the entire pot. So they didn't actually have that many people did it. They had 500 people who did it, but it reminded me of something you guys talk about on the pod or have talked about on the pod, which is, you know, the power of like crowdsourcing things like SpaceX, if they want to develop some new technology, they put out some competition and that tends to attract more interesting people than, you know, if they hire a bunch of recruiters to go, you know, find the people in theory they're looking for. And the example, the example I think you're thinking about is they were trying to figure out some like were they trying to like decode some protein or something that helped with this AIDS um, medication and they like turned it into a video game and they'd spent 10 years trying to solve it and then like a bunch of video gamers got it done in like three weeks. Yeah. Well, there's the SpaceX. What's, what's the SpaceX challenge? The one that everyone knows. Um, Are you talking about XPRIZE? It's just like they're... <laughs> that's not from SpaceX. Yeah, but there's also... But yeah, but yeah, that's like a, a version of that where they basically just put out the bounty and then let people, let anybody sort of enter to, to try to win. Okay, there's a, I feel like there's another one that SpaceX does. But in any case, like, what I'm getting at is all of, I mean, we work for HubSpot. There's all these companies that are trying to attract, like, quote, unquote, top talent. And they're doing it in a way that, in most cases, like, true top talent. Like, are you going to want to be, like, DM'd on LinkedIn and go through, like, a traditional interview process? Like, in most cases, no. And so my question is, why isn't there, like, a really like mischief style recruiting agency that puts out these challenges that the smartest people on the internet are like stoked to solve just out of like sheer pride that um, they then can funnel potentially into these companies. Maybe it's the case that these people just like would never want to work for these larger companies, but I just wonder why there isn't a more creative route to I have something. recruiting. I have something for you. So this is one of the very first articles The Hustle ever wrote. I don't even know if you can Google it anymore. It was literally like, We wrote it like two weeks after starting. And it was about my friend named Max. And if you uh, Google, uh, Ben, the Hustle Google interview or the Hustle secret Google interview. So my friend Max was teaching himself. I I, got to remember all the details. This was like six years ago. He he was... uh, learning some type of coding, some type of language. It was, and it was like a rare language. And he was typing in all these things on Google. Like what does blank mean? How do you do blank? And after a while, his, his Chrome browser, like went, like looked like the matrix. And it said, you look like you might belong to one of us. And it, and he says, we've noticed that you've been Googling a lot about this type of language and we are hiring for that. Would you be interested in applying here? That's amazing. And very few people ever saw this, but we wrote an article about this. This article got seen by millions of people. What's it say, Ben? What was the language? Google has a secret interview process and it landed me a job. That's the headline. And, and he ended up working there and it worked. It worked. And uh, it was wild. That's dope. And you know, only Google could do that because they own the browser and the search engine. But uh, but what if you were just like, what, what if there was just like an app that just sat on your computer 
that basically just tracked everything you did. I know, sounds great, but like gave you job opportunities based on what you do on your computer, right? Like if it knows that Steph is in all these different like subreddits and it's like, and she's like looking at Google Trends and all this stuff, that's like a signal for what type of person you are, right? Like it's actually like a much higher quality signal in theory than any job interview you could do where you're just trying to like present yourself as a certain way versus like what you actually do on the internet, right? Like, oh, you spend a lot of time in Excel or what you, what you actually do on your computer. It's like, you spend a lot of time in Excel, you know, so uh, we've seen we've seen what your capabilities are. Okay, if you're doing macros in Excel, you could probably qualify for certain types of jobs. And so I wonder if there's like a thing you could do like for college students, it's like, hey, put this on your computer and like, do you want your first job out of college? Like, we'll, we'll help figure out what that job should be. We'll help get you like a job opportunity uh, just by putting this like tracker on your computer. Quick interruption. Do me a favor. Scroll down and you're going to see a link to The Hustle. So if you want to stay up to date on the tech and business news you need to know, check out The Hustle. It's a daily email. I used to help write it. I love it. So check it out. Scroll down below. Sounds very not yeah, evil. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I know. It's always like a, oh, tracking everything on your computer thing. But the reason I thought of this is because I watched the QAnon documentary and in it they have, have you guys heard of like Cicada 3301? No, no, no. It, it's they covered it in the documentary, but basically it was like the epitome of these like crazy online puzzles. I think there's been three of them. The first two were solved. The third one still has not been solved. And they are like, you know, there's there's like a picture online and there's like a message and encrypted in that message. There's a bunch of numbers and then you have to know to like go to another website and put it in. The point is a lot of people thought that this was actually a recruitment tool for like either the NSA or the CIA. And so I was like, man, there should be something maybe not that crazy. But something did, did, like did that online that? for companies. Did you guys ever do one of those? I did this in college. We found this website and it was like, you know, it said some like vague thing. It was like, the game has only begun, but have you realized it? Like, have you oh. realized that it's begun yet? And it's like, you have to like right click view source and in the source code, there's a URL. You go to that URL and then it downloads an audio file. You listen to the audio file. It sounds like nothing. You listen to it backwards. All of a sudden it gives you coordinates. You go to those coordinates on a map, the map leads you. And it was like a 50 part game like mystery game and me and what all my this? friends got totally obsessed with this we spent like hours and hours and what hours was this called weeks. i don't remember what the name this is back in college this is like 15 years ago but like the uh i remember at the end the the last puzzle we could never solve and i think the guy just made an unsolvable puzzle like i just think there was no solution uh and his name was mr wiggles or mr squiggles or some shit like that and he um he had this puzzle that was like the unsolvable thing at the end, but it was so much fun. And actually, now that I think about it, that is actually a great like filter and barometer for who might be good at certain types of types of work. Like the type of person that would do that for fun and solve that problem, I would love to hire. 